Welcome back to Anatomy Dissected by Complete Anatomy. We are two-thirds of our way through the Cranial Nerve series. Hopefully you've been following along and enjoyed it so far. Today, we'll be taking a look at the ninth cranial nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve. As we've done with our previous videos in the series, we'll first explain the function of this nerve, explore its course, and then round off by looking at a few clinical correlates. The glossopharyngeal nerve is a mixed cranial nerve. It is composed of sensory, motor, and parasympathetic nerve fibers. It's quite versatile in its function. It provides general sensation to the oropharynx, middle ear cavity, and auditory tube, carotid body and sinus, and the posterior third of the tongue. It also receives taste sensation from the posterior third of the tongue. It gives parasympathetic innervation to the parotid gland. And finally, it provides motor innervation to the stylopharyngeus muscle, contributing to swallowing and speech. Now, let's explore the course of this nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve emerges as rootlets from the medulla on the posterior lateral border of the medullary olive. From here, it has a short intracranial journey over the lateral part of the occipital bone to the jugular foramen, which is located between the temporal bone and the occipital bone in the posterior cranial fossa. You can easily identify this nerve as it is the most anterior cranial nerve to pass through the jugular foramen, anterior to the vagus and accessory nerves. The glossopharyngeal nerve has two ganglia. The superior ganglion found within the jugular foramen followed by the inferior ganglion found below the exit of the jugular foramen. There are six main branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Although it has communicating branches with the vagus nerve, sympathetic trunk, and facial nerve. Let's have a look at these branches. The first branch arises from the inferior ganglion. It is called the tympanic nerve, and it carries general visceral sensory fibers from the tympanic cavity and auditory tube. It also carries preganglionic parasympathetic nerve fibers to the tympanic plexus. The fibers from this plexus form the lesser petrosal nerve, which carries secretory motor fibers to the parotid gland. The remainder of the glossopharyngeal nerve runs inferiorly and anteriorly, passing between the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery. Here, it gives off the second branch, the carotid sinus nerve, which supplies the carotid sinus and body. The third branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve is the pharyngeal branch, which carries general visceral sensory fibers from the oropharynx and surrounding mucosal membranes. It then unites with the vagus nerve and sympathetic trunk to form the pharyngeal plexus, supplying the muscles of the pharynx and the soft palate. Inferiorly, the glossopharyngeal nerve gives off a fourth branch, the stylopharyngeal branch, which wraps around the stylopharyngeus muscle, providing motor innervation to this muscle. The glossopharyngeal nerve then passes into the space between the superior and middle pharyngeal constrictor muscles, where it gives off two more branches. The tonsillar branch, which carries sensory nerve fibers from the palatine tonsils, and the lingual branch, which carries special sensory taste fibers from the posterior third of the tongue, as well as providing general sensation to this area. To summarize, the six branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve are the tympanic nerve, the carotid sinus nerve, the pharyngeal branch, the stylopharyngeal branch, the tonsillar branch, and the lingual branch. Now, let's explore some of the clinical correlates associated with this nerve. If damaged, the glossopharyngeal nerve presents with a variety of symptoms, and these may include difficulty swallowing, loss of general and taste sensation in the posterior third of the tongue, decreased gag reflex, and loss of sensation to the pharynx and soft palate. This is most commonly caused by strokes, basal skull fractures, and tumors. And there you have it. Hopefully, 
Now you're able to identify the origin of the glossopharyngeal nerve from its rootlets and follow its course through the jugular foramen. Understand the role of the six main branches of this nerve. And finally, recognize some of the symptoms associated with damage to this nerve. Stay tuned for the rest of our series. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more top class anatomy content.